Hello dear students, welcome to introduction to nanoscience and nanotechnology lecture number 14. I am Dr. Pervez Ahmed and in today's lectures we will have a discussions on the electrical properties of nanomaterials. Uh, so the most popular nanomaterials are uh, nanotubes, particularly the carbon nanotubes. So let's proceed uh, to our today's lectures. Uh, we will start our discussions uh, with the electrical properties of the nanomaterial by first considering or comparing the band gap of different kind of material. So just like we have mentioned in the previous lecture that band gap increasing as the particle size decreases. But first of all we should know about the band gap of different material that is we have conductors or metals, we have insulators and along with that we have semiconductors I mean these are the most popular or well known materials. So you know that about the metal or the conductors I mean they have both overlapping uh, conductions and a valence band just like you can see it here I mean the valence and the conduction band both I mean they are uh, I mean they have overlapping uh, bands. Uh, when you come to the insulator so in the insulators there, uh, there exists a huge band gap between the uh, valence band and the conduction band. So it's almost impossible for the electrons to pass uh, these barriers. Uh, and then uh, we have the semiconductors. So in semiconductor we have a particular band gap that can be crossed with the supply of some amount of energy uh, to the electrons at the valence band. That is, uh, I mean it has uh, a band gap but that band can be crossed with the applications or if we apply a particular amounts of the energy. So we have different kind of uh, different semiconductor materials uh, with respect to uh, I mean the energy they need for the electron to cross the energy and this energy barriers. So this energy barrier I mean that exists between the uh, insulator that exists between the semiconductors and uh, it's also increased uh, I mean this also existing for uh, the semiconductors uh, nanoparticle but unlike the favored semiconductor are uh, for I mean for an intrinsic or uh, extrinsic semiconductor uh, when the size of the semiconductor material uh, decreases that is uh, when it comes to the nanomaterials so it's a uh, I mean uh, the band gap had become widened as compared to their uh, counterpart and the uh, I mean, I mean, as compared to the same material, uh, uh, I mean that exists in the bulk form. I mean, if this let's suppose a, a particular semiconductor material in bulk, so uh, its the uh, band gap will be widened, or it will look, uh, I mean, in the nanoparticle, uh, like uh, I mean, in the nano form. So the band gap will be, I mean, widened, just like the way we we can see it, or we can observe it here. So this is how the band gap wide. I mean, with the decrease in size of the materials, the band gap, uh, I mean, it is affected and it is a uh, widened. So along with that, the energy level is also uh, become uh, discrete. So uh, effect of structures on the conductions. Uh, so what 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 are the effect? Uh, I mean, it's that normally we feel on the uh, conductions. Uh, when the size of the materials has been uh, reduced from bulk to nano. So just like uh, we mentioned in the previous lectures, if you have materials and we make it into uh, or we brought it into the nano scale, that is we reduce the size of the nano material or we synthesize a particular materials and the nano palm. So we already know by uh, studying their, their, their properties that nano material that normally have fewer defects. I mean they have less number of defect as compared to their bulk counterpart. Uh, so one would expect increased conductivity versus uh, micro scale. So the fewer defect mean that there will be some sort of the perfect one. So that will perfectly uh, I mean uh, increase their conductivity as compared to their uh, bulk counterpart. Along with that we have other electrical effect uh, at the nano scale that includes surface scattering, uh, change in the electronic structures, uh, ballistic conductions, uh, uh, discrete charging, uh, tunneling conductions and along with that we can observe microstructural effect. All of these that can be 
uh, some of these that can be studied in this lecture and some of these that will be discussed on the coming uh, in the coming lecture uh, I mean it's suitable uh, locations but here uh, the most important one here this particular lecture is uh, I mean that is uh, surface scattering because we know that uh, at nanoscales majority of uh, atom they are lying at the surface so surface scattering is uh, very important regarding the electrical properties of the nanomaterial so this why we will proceed toward the surface scattering and will trying to understand uh, the effect of surface uh, surface scattering on the electrical properties of the nanomaterial. So what we have, electron have a main uh, electron have a main free path and solid state materials. Uh, what it mean? It mean that uh, this main free path. Uh, I mean, uh, we just mentioned about the main free path that electron have a main uh, a main free path in the solid state material. So now the question is, what is uh, a main mean free path? So main free path is the distance between the scattering event as charge carrier move through the material. I mean, it is some uh, somehow a definitions of the main free path. I mean, the people already know uh, who have studied the solid state physics or solid state chemistry, so they know what is mean by uh, main free path. So main free path is the distance between the scattering events uh, as the charge carrier move through. Uh, the materials. So uh, in metal, uh, you know that where we have overlapping wellness and conduction band. So the main free path is the order of tens of nanometers. I mean the main free path uh, in the metal or in the conductor it is in the order of uh, tens of uh, nanometers. So unlike metals, so uh, if the dimension of the nanostructures are smaller uh, than the electron uh, main free path. Uh, then the surface scattering becomes a factor. I mean that is, I mean we have it here for the metal and for metal we are saying that uh, the main free path is on the order of tens of nanometers. But here we are saying that if the dimension of a nanostructures are smaller than the electron or main free path, so what will happen? Then we will have the surface scattering and it will become a main factor for the conductivity are finding or affecting the electronic properties of the uh, nanomaterial. So how it will be? So here we have an example and here uh, you can see that if you have bulk material that is micro scale materials, then for micro scale materials you can see it here. Uh, uh, I mean we have the diameters of the materials that is greater than the main free path. And here you can see that that how the electrons are, are how they can move and how the transport we have. But if we have the nanomaterials, so in nanomaterial you can see that we have the diameters, and the diameter of the material is smaller than the main free path of the electrons, so we can have the elastic scattering. And here uh, we have again uh, we can have the inelastic scattering. So what we have, uh, what kind of scattering we have uh, in the nanomaterial? So basically there are two type of surface uh, scattering uh, that exist in the nanomaterials and they are well known uh, I mean they are elastic and elastic scattering. So now what, what is the effect of elastic scattering in nanomaterial particularly in nanowire and nanotubes and what uh, are the effect of inelastic scattering uh, on the uh, at, at the nanoscale uh, particularly in the uh, nanomaterial. So uh, be remember we are considering that with respect to the conductivity or the electrical property. So elastic scattering, uh, when we have the elastic scattering, so be remember it does not affect the conductivity. I mean the elastic scattering, uh, it does not affect the conductivity while the inelastic scattering just like you can see it here is some sort of the uh, inelastic scattering, I mean the uh, diagram for inelastic scattering. So inelastic scattering decreases conductivity. So uh, what we have, uh, if you want to find the electrical property of the nanomaterial, so we should also, uh, I mean, give that factor in mind, the whether the scattering will be elastic or inelastic. So if we have elastic scattering, uh, so I mean, if we have nanomaterial and the diameter is smaller than the main free path, uh, just like the nanowire, so we will have the elastic scattering and in case of elastic scattering, the conductivity is not affected. But unlike that, if we have inelastic scattering, so uh, it means that 
the scattering, uh, I mean uh, the analytic scattering, the conductivity uh, decreases. So the example of the electrical properties uh, we will uh, change as what? Uh, we will change uh, the conductivity. Uh, as an example, we will consider uh, the example of carbon nanotubes and we will try to understand the conductivity of uh, the nanotube. So you remember that what are nanotubes? Nanotubes are long, thin, cylindrical structure of the carbon. Uh, particularly, if you talk about the carbon nanotubes, so carbon nanotubes are long, thin, cylindrical uh, structures of the uh, carbon. And a, and a good example are the, uh, I mean, it's uh, a typical uh, micrograph or typical uh, image of the carbon nanotubes of different kind. You can see or you can observe here uh, in this particular slide. I mean, the, this is the exact type uh, of carbon nanotubes, the armchair and the spiral carbon nanotubes. I mean, the people who are in the field of nanotechnology, they are uh, well aware that carbon nanotube with respect to their diameter or chirality, they are being divided in two different uh, kinds. So all these types, they are given here. That what is mean by the chiral, what is mean by the armchair, and what is mean by uh, the zigzag. So this is uh, a typical, uh, image a typical, typical uh, a photograph of the carbon nanotube. So what happens? Uh, be remembered. Uh, so carbon nanotubes are hundred times stronger than the steels, and that fact we will discuss later on in particular lecture. Uh, so stay tuned. You have to stay tuned there, and you have to add there uh, that how we will discuss there that why they are stronger and how they are stronger. Uh, I mean, uh, why they are 100 times stronger than the steel that we have, we will have to discuss is here. And be remember along with that strength, they are very flexible and have unique electrical uh, properties. Uh, so be remember uh, their electrical properties uh, change it with the diameter or with the twist and number of wall. I mean, uh, carbon nanotubes at the same time, they can be conductor and along with that, they can be uh, semiconductor depend upon the chirality uh, or we can say the diameter or the twist. I mean, we may have a carbon nanotube as a conductor, but if we create a twist or we can compress or we can decrease or change the diameter of a particular carbon nanotube, so uh, with that we can change its electrical properties from conductor to uh, semiconductor. So that is, uh, I mean, so, especially related with the uh, with the carbon nanotube. So unlike that, if we have boron nitride nanotubes, so boron nitride nanotubes, they are large bandwidth gap semiconductor, but their electrical conductivity, uh, I mean, it's independent of the chirality or uh, the diameter. So that's why in case of boron nitride nanotube, we are saying that they have independent, uh, diameter independent uh, electrical uh, property. So, uh, they can be uh, just like as we mentioned about the carbon nanotube, they can be either conducting or semiconductor uh, in their electrical behavior. But this behavior is totally dependent on the diameter or, or the twist. So if we just create a twist or change the diameters of a carbon nanotube, so we can change their conducting or semiconductor uh, properties. I mean their electrical behavior is totally dependent upon the diameter or twist or number of wall. So that's all we have for this lecture. I hope you enjoy. Uh, see you for next lectures and that lecture will be on uh, melting point of a substance at the nanoscale. That will be lecture number 15. So stay tuned with the lecture number 15. Uh, hope you will learn a lot there also. So, till then, uh, bye bye.